Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Let's Chat with Derek. This week, we are going to be speaking to somebody who I have known for many, many years. Many of you here in the Ottawa community are familiar with him as well. What's really interesting about doing this style of show is we always know pretty much what people are. And by that, I mean, you know, what their role is, where they work. What I love about this show is the fact that we get to find out more about who they are. And we're going to do that exactly today with Robin Duetta. He is the Community Development Specialist with Care for Health and Community Services. And of course, he is a great friend of the culinary community in Ottawa and also a great friend of mine. Robin, thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's nice to see your face. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, These are unprecedented times, and we're certainly going to talk about that. But as I said off the top, it really gives, you know, myself and the viewer an opportunity to find out more about people here in Ottawa, people they may be familiar with, but maybe they don't know their entire story. So if you don't mind, I'd like to go back to Robin as a child. Tell me a little bit about where you grew up and uh, maybe a little bit about your family life. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm from Belleville, Ontario, uh, Belleville, the Quinty area, and um, half of my family was in Prince Edward County. So, you know, I go bad. This is putting me back when, when Prince Edward County was the farming community and not full of rich houses and, and you know, very, very uh, common folk and meager lives. And uh, that's all changed dramatically. But so, you know, a piece of my heart lives around the Bay of Quinty and the Lake Ontario and growing up, you know, I, I'm, I'm the youngest of a large family, large for me. Um, My uh, mom worked at Nortel. My dad did a much like me did many, many, many different things. Um, There's, there's uh, nine years difference between me and my next sibling. So I kind of grew up, in a in a world of my own and had brothers and sisters that were older and had families by the time i knew what that was all about so i kind of lived a only child life for the most part with my mom my parents were separated and i grew up with my mother and um i uh ended up in ottawa about 35 years ago 33 maybe but uh, 35 okay. for the sake of the conversation and, so, um, so, what, so yeah, what brought you, know, you to I, ottawa so I got a job at a restaurant down in the market called Malibu Jacks. You know, I know um, Malibu I know. Jacks. You sent me their nacho <laughs> recipe because I was I telling you how much I loved it. And I had no idea you even worked there at the time. <laughs> the Good Friends, Good Times Taco Dip. If anybody would like it, That's follow it. this message. Let me leave a note. I'll, uh, I'll share the recipe. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, we've had some. There's some significant people that uh, worked at Malibu Jack. Stephen Becta, uh, Stephen Becta was a, started his his hospitality career there. Um, uh, Stephen, I guess, was a busboy downtown. And then uh, Jeff O'Reilly, I, Jeff O'Reilly from uh, from Darcy's. Um, I didn't even know this, but uh, he worked at the one out on Hunt Club and Bank. Was kind of the the death nail of that. Uh, of that whole franchise, uh, that, that yeah. not not Jeff, but uh, that location that kind of put them under. But so I came here to to manage. Uh, I opened helped open Bell's Corners, the the Malibu Jackson Bell's Corners. It's now at Eastside Mario's. Uh, we had the first rooftop patio in the city back when there was a farm behind the, the behind those buildings <laughs> on Robertson Road. And <laughs> yes. You'd be up there having a lovely having a lovely bar, cocktail and then they'd spread the manure down the field and stink everybody out for a month they couldn't be up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and, and so why also, why did you choose sorry, I was just gonna say Robin, why why did you choose the restaurant in, industry? What attracted you to that industry? Well, you know, there I, I think like a lot of people it was necessity more than anything. Um and and keep in mind, it's been a very long time since I had that kind of a connection to the restaurant world. Um, but you know, at the time, I was a young gay guy showing up in a big city, and you know, without without a, a you know whole lot of credentials behind me, so it was the easiest place to get a job. And uh, I wasn't good at it, you know, because I I don't. For those that know me well, know that I don't hold much back, and. and uh, you know, I, I didn't I didn't care much for the 
the, you know, oh, yes. Oh, let me help you with you. Me, I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Have a seat. Enjoy the food and pay up and get out. Yeah. Let's go. Let's get, get the this hell going. out. <laughs> no, I, think, you know, I care a little more about hospitality today than I did then, perhaps. Yeah. But, uh, um, you know, it took me a long, long time to find my calling and find my place. And I've, I've done, I've done, you know, my goodness. Do you remember the bath bombs at, at remember a shop on, in the Rideau Center called uh, The Promised Land? It was up on the <laughs> yes. second level and had the big bathtub with the bath bombs. Well, I yeah. made bath products for Promised Land, sh bath bombs, and, you know, those bathtubs full of bath bombs. And, was, and, and you know, that started by hand and uh, and then went into really? bath products and all kinds of other things. And, um, yeah, I've done some strange things, I've done some strange things. But, you know, it was just there was a lot of angst in my life. And, you know, I I, uh, I, I, I ran from who I was. I wasn't paying attention to how I felt. I was more worried about how you felt about me. And I had a very conflicted life for a long, long time. Um, you know, so the, the, the restaurant industry is a magnet for, for misfits. And, 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 and don't get, I, I mean that in the most loving way. You know, it's, it, yes. it's, it's really, I, listen, place that we, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. I mean, I, I, just like you, I, I was in the restaurant industry as well. And, you know, if I, I, I look back, probably uh, I would say my early teens to early 20s. And it was it, it that that's it. It kind of was a beautiful thing that it, we were all these sort of misfit toys. Listen, I was a three time high school dropout. And during those times that I dropped out of high school, my mom was like, OK, you're going to get a job. And where did we all get jobs? It was the restaurant industry. Totally. And who else would put up with the bull that some of those owners would do? I remember uh, a gentleman uh, 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 considered one of the greatest restaurateurs the city's had. Uh, uh, I, after I left Malibu Jack's, I went to work for him on Spark Street. And it was the only sit-down restaurant on Spark Street at the time. And, you know, there was like a three-hour wait list for lunch. And that man wow. would come in the restaurant at 1230 in the afternoon and l lose it because there was a napkin out of place on the floor. Someone dropped something on the floor and hadn't picked it up in a moment. And, you know, the tyrants, people that would just abuse you <laughs> for the sake of abusing you. And, you know, who else would put up with that? And, you know, the, yeah. the, it uh, and I, I don't mean to I think, you know, things are dra dramatically different in the industry today. Don't think I'm, I'm painting that brush, I'm painting the community today with that brush because I understand it in a whole other way and a whole new way. And, you know, um, there's no one who has a better appreciation for what our, our culinary community does than, than myself. And, um, yeah. so, you know, through all of the things I've learned and all the things I've done, I ended up in a place uh surrounded by the most beautiful people i've ever known in my life and the most generous community uh i'm not trying to fast forward anything here i you know we can certainly go back and visit some others but like you know all roads lead here you know and 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 yeah um i'm in awe of the versatility and the stamina and the generosity of the restaurant community in this city in this city um you know Every community has them, but we're special here. This town produces people that care. And um, it's another reason why I stayed in Ottawa. I absolutely adore every aspect of this city. And, um, you know, you can, you can, you know, people talk about, well, you know, oh, the food's great in Ottawa, but it's not Montreal or but it's not Toronto. That's right. We might not have some of the things that some of those bigger cities have, but the one thing we have that they don't, our chefs can teach the country about community and working together and achieving great goals. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree it's more. You gave, you gave me chills. You gave me chills as you're describing it because I know the culinary community well myself, certainly not as well as you. I, I want to talk about when did it become this special relationship for you working with the restaurant industry here in Ottawa? So, you know, one of those things I transitioned my life to, um, I started a magazine with a, with a friend and we started a, 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 a magazine about, you know, um, 
Ron Eads, God love him. Um, <laughs> uh, and I want to tie one because there's no conversation about the culinary community without him coming up, but, but I'll get to him. Absolutely. But, we'll talk to him about him yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So we started a magazine called food mode magazine, a little tiny digest size magazine. That was a miserable failure. We, you know, I, cause I knew nothing about, <laughs> I don't know how to tell stories, but like managing that stuff. That's just crazy. Just made lots of mistakes and hurt a lot of feelings. But the one thing we did was tell people stories and we were up, you know, on the, on the, 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 the blossoming of the of the local food movement. We we weren't talking about the dry crustinis and the and the sour uh, sa the sourness of the maitre d' or whatever. We talked about the farmer who was who was working with that chef. And we talked about the chef and his life, much like you're doing with this series. We 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 put people in touch with who was in the kitchen rather than what was on the table, and. Uh, you know, and then by doing that, we'd start doing a couple of events and we, you know, just learned our way, learned my, I learned my way into what I do today, uh, just by connecting with these people and sharing ideas and just being daring enough to try something new and God, what a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. What well, you, you mentioned Ron, you mentioned Ron Ede. So let's, let's talk about Ron and maybe you can describe a little bit about, you know, how you two created this beautiful relationship. I mean, Ron was a regular guest on daytime. He'd come in and uh, I, to this day, I still make a couple of the recipes that he shared with us, his reduced balsamic vinegar. I still do. Oh, and yeah. his, his hamburgers, which is the easiest and simplest recipe, but Ron would tell you the easy and simplest recipe is sometimes the best recipe. So tell me about your relationship with Ron. So, you know, and he was skeptical of me at first, you know, he was, he didn't trust too many people and he was a hard one. And, you know, it's funny, it's hard to talk about him without trying to repeat his voice. And I, I did it far better when I was <laughs> drunk, let me assure you that I do it when I'm sober, but, um, uh, you know, we just connected. He liked what we were doing, and the it was interesting because right at the time uh, my magazine uh, was debuted, the Ottawa Citizen was pulling back on its coverage of local food, and and Ron was becoming a, a you know a, 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 a he was you know editing other other parts of the paper, and you know the food right. piece was was done more. You know they were going out to. It was the start of the downsizing of, of, of publications in the country. And um, so his his column was reduced to just a couple, you know, a couple of stories each week, no food section. And he was frustrated. So he liked what he saw us doing. And, you know, he kind of coached me a lot about what, you know, what to watch for and kind of, you know, he 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 even wrote sorry he didn't write for the magazine his son graham did he had a a, a column about the son of the food editor of the ottawa citizen was a regular contributor to food mode magazine well ron wrote the articles graham had nothing to do with it all graham did was cash <laughs> the paycheck i sent him and ron was writing the things and you could tell the moment you read it that it was him because it was just so listen to me i even talk like him when i'm when I'm, oh, oh yeah thank you thank you because you know what um my God, what a what a vacuum he left! Uh, and I'm not talking about the one that that, that that cleans the house either. Like he's just there's an echo because he's not there, and you know there's a seat unfilled, and and you know a ticket never sold, and um, you know the reason we have the community we have today is in large part of him, you know, because. And 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 the reason there's a bit of a disconnect today is because, um, you know, I have great respect for Peter Hum. Uh, Peter does what he can, and and within the, you know, he's not only the, the you know, he's he's got a lot of hats at that paper, so it's difficult for him to be able to do the kinds of things Ron did. But like, it was community building. You know, it's what I do. It's what Ron did. You know, it wasn't. It had nothing to do with the stories. We were telling the stories to just get people at the table and bring people around the message and get people together. And, you know, we haven't done any of that in a long, long time. Um, you know, yeah. every year there was the restaurant awards and Ron would be one of the judges and we, I became one with him and we, we'd give awards for the best restaurateur of the year. And we give they had new restaurants and all those things more important than all the re recognition that people were getting is it was bringing us together. And I like to think that Taste for Hope and Feast of Fields and these other events that I do kind of still have a little bit of that there as best we can. Oh, I, 
Uh, I, I think so, Rob. And I think it actually not just a little, I, I think it has a lot of it. I mean, you know that I've been to so many of those events and just seeing even the chefs and the way that they talk to each other and support each other and, you know, to go, you know, the, the after parties were always so amazing as they were packing up, they were visiting other stations, you know, they do charity events together. I, I think that remains. And, you know, we obviously we can't wait to have them again, but I, I think that remains, you know, Rob, I, I think you're, you're not giving yourself enough credit. Those types of events are, are still bringing the community together. They're, they're still incredibly important. It just, you know, it, it, it's it's my life work. You know, I I I I talk to you a bit about you know where I've come in my journey and you know the last few years and what's gone on and things. You know, and I stayed sick for a very very long time because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to find my place sober. You know, I was a drunk, a a, a terrible drunk, and um, I. I stayed sick because I didn't know. I stayed unhealthy because I didn't know. I was clean and sober for many years, many years ago, and I relapsed. And um, I, 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 uh, it took me a long time to get back. And and I stayed out there a long time because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to have my place in this world I love. And, yeah, I was uh, going to say, Robin, did you fear that you were going to lose the connections that that you had? you know, in, in, within that industry, you know, I'm not painting a, a, a broad brush here, but within that industry, you know, th th there is a lot of celebration and a lot of partying and, and so forth. Did you fear that perhaps you'd, you'd lose some of those friendships and some of those connections if, if you did get sober? Very much so. You know, I didn't yeah. want to be that guy sitting over the corner, not having any fun and, you know, not being awkward and that guy that nobody could, nobody wanted to be around because he wasn't doing what they were doing. And, you know, God, if I'd only know, you know, I'm the one, yeah. you know, you've seen me. I'm the one at Taste for Hope, at, at Feast of Fields and Taste for Hope. I'm care. You'll see me with arms full of beer and, and wine and going, making sure everybody's got a drink. Exactly what I did when I was, when I was drinking it myself, I just had more to share because I wasn't in the, I wasn't drinking it all myself. And, <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, they they trust me i think you know i i my word is my you know i i can deliver on the things i promised them today and you know i'm just better at what i do i think and um but yeah i was scared that i wouldn't be a part of this world i love and you know that someone else would come along and they'd have a better time with them and they'd lose their they'd lose their infatuation with me and i'd be left on an island by myself and i just couldn't have imagined it and it only, when it got to the point where, and I'm going to come back to Ron Eat again, you know, when it got to the point where I had no other hope and and I had no options that I called on, the, the first person I called was Anna Silverman. Uh, Anna was the executive director at the Shepherds of Good Hope at the time. And I, I asked her if she would drive me to detox. I didn't even, I, I couldn't even get up to get a detox. And I made an appointment and they set me up with an appointment at nine in the morning and I had no way to get there. So I called Anna and she drove me to detox and I stayed at detox until there was a bed for me in a treatment facility. And then Ron Ede came and picked me up and he drove me to the treatment facility and I stayed there and um, I got clean and sober and life changed. You know, I found hope and I found my place yeah. again and um, it didn't take me long. And, you well, know, Robin, what it, was the trigger? Like, did you hit rock bottom? Or was there a, a, a moment that you hit rock bottom and you sort of woke up and you went, oh, my God, what have I been doing? Well, you know, that's a fallacy. You know, uh, you, you okay. don't hit there's no bottom. You don't hit bottom until you stop right. digging. And, you know, so um, it just became the misery around me was too much. And of course, you know, there's finances and living situations and stuff. I would have been homeless. I would have been on the street with going to the place that I raised hundreds of thousands, uh, that I helped raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for. And I would have been having to, you know, like I would have had to go and, and have them take care of me. And, you know, that was another unfathomable con uh, decision. I wouldn't, you know, hey, another reason that kept me sick so long, I used to work with the people at Detox, you know, um, years before when I was clean and sober, I knew everybody who worked there and, and I, I worked at the Salvation Army. And, um, you know, another, another reason why I didn't want to get clean and sober is because I didn't want them standing over my bed watching me sober up. And you know, all these, 
all these incredible barriers we our committee tells us to stay away from you know and uh you know these voices in our head that, that lie to us and keep us sick because you know none of it was true i showed up at detox and didn't know a soul and um you know so it wasn't a specific thing that triggered it it was just you know i could not you know that it's, it's been said many times i was just sick and tired of being sick and tired and I I, right. I ran out of options on so many places. I had no more room on the credit cards. My mother had no more money. I had nobody I could turn to to ask for money to help me keep drinking. And it was, you know, God helped a decision ha be made that, that resulted in it all going away. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, there are people listening to us right now or that are going to be listening to this video that are going to be like, man, I, you know, that that's hitting some tones for, you know, there's hope. And, and it all starts with one decision. And, and, and I, I, I didn't have to worry about where, where I was going. All I had to be comfortable with was knowing that I wasn't where I was. And, you know, um, hmm. if I can do it, anyone can. And um, there are options. Cause you know, you look at, I've talked to people many times about this. I shared this with you the other day about, you know, the look at the look at the the responsibility of chefs in our kitchens. I know chefs that have tremendous problems with drugs and alcohol. Um the barriers for them getting help are 10 times what mine were because their whole not only their life, but everybody around them, all of the staff of the restaurant, the owners, the suppliers, all of their friends, all of the, the this this persona they built up, it all disappears when they're not there. And you know, for them to have to contemplate leaving for even two weeks to go and get detoxed and stop get get the stuff out of the system, you know, um, is 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 massive. And um, the fear of losing everything is is what keeps us mired in the in the. In, it's what's going to kill us. You know, we don't want to, yeah. we can't make the sacrifice to do those things because the consequences are going to be terrible. Um, but we'll settle for something that's going to kill us. It's like taking a pill and hoping someone else is going to die. You know? Um, right. And it's all, yeah. you know, leap and the net will appear. I know I'm f full of slogans and stuff right now, but you know, <laughs> leap and the net will appear. Just take the jump, get rid of it. And, and it's all going to be good. I'm living testimony that, you know, that, so you know, how long now, how, how long have you been sober now this time around? Seven years last on the 5th of May. Thanks. Congratulations. To yeah. Thank congratulations. Thank well, let's, let's bring us ourselves to today and, and talk about, um, Get off my industry that, 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 <laughs> no, no, I, I appreciate it. This is the reason I wanted to have this conversation with you because it's important to have these conversations as you, as you just described, they're difficult conversations to have with yourself. They're difficult conversations to have with other people and it's difficult to share. You know, so I really appreciate how authentic you are and how honest you are. And, you know, as you said, uh, you know, there could be somebody watching and, and you're giving somebody hope that, you know what, it, you can you can get out of this. You can find a way out. It, it is absolutely possible. But I wanted to come to today because you still have this wonderful relationship with the restaurant industry, the culinary community and scene here in Ottawa. And they've been devastated, many of them, by the pandemic. Tell me a little bit about what you're hearing from some. And you know what? There's some good stories out there, too. But let's discuss some of the impact of, of the pandemic. You know, um, I think it was the I'd have to check the date specifically, but I think, you know, the news came down on the 13th of March. I think 13th was the date. And the 14th of March, I sat down at a table in Van A on Barrett Street in New Edinburgh with Harriet Clooney and Donna Chevrier from Ola Cochina. We were in Ola, Ola's dining room. And, and you know, um, all the focus was about, okay, what are we gonna do? I know people that pivoted very early, the ones that, the ones that got in there and figured out how to work something to be able to keep their food flowing out the doors and, 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 and connected with their customers, have learned lessons that, will, that have changed their business for the, forever. Nobody's happy. It's a terrible, terrible thing for everybody to be going. I'm sorry if I'm, you know, 
will will you beep these out do they do they yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> we'll do our best um yeah. okay thank you um you know it's a terrible thing they're going through and nobody's happy with it and some people have been devastated i with, without a doubt but but you know there are some great stories there i know one chef that saved all their money um you know all the all the grants and 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 things that came from the governments they didn't spend it they saved it they put it away they invested it um you know are coming out of this having paid off debt and and are probably in a better position than they would have been had they not had to make the sacrifices they have over us so you know i think that that casual dining has changed for a very long time uh uh you know the 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 these these uh ghost kitchens that have come up and things so that's that it'll be interesting to see what happens there the fine dining experience i just can't wait i know lots of people who can't wait to get back into the dining rooms with and and have some beautiful foie gras and lovely food and, and other food and dine with the chefs and things so you know everyone's through with the madness they just want to get open again and get back in front of people and that's the that's where everyone needs to focus forget about why we're here or how it all happened or what we can do it's about what we're going to do moving forward and i know Robin, did that, that answer uh, that well you, yes yes it did very well i know that you and your team at care for are working on some things as well i mean this is a fluid situation and so forth but you know events are a big part of of the fundraising that, that you do at care for, uh, I imagine you've sat down with your team and you're, you're, you're looking forward and, and trying to find, you know, new ways to, to do these events. Uh, is that, is that true? Is that, is that sort of what you guys have been doing through all this? 100%, 100% and watch for September. We will be back in September in some capacity. We, there's lots of things in, in the air right now, but, we will be there. We will be doing something in September and we will have great uh, uh, momentum by that time, I think. Well, I, uh, we all yeah, we all can't wait for uh, for for that momentum to keep building. And, you know, we, we are seeing promise. There's there's no doubt about that. But I understand there's a lot of frustration, not only in the in the restaurant industry, but the you know, the the small business community in general, right across the board, right across the country. And of course, here in, in Ottawa has had a has a real struggle through it. I, I can't thank you enough, Robin, for spending time being so honest with us and, uh, you know, just showing your authentic self and, and sharing your story. And I'm sure it's going to help others uh, that are watching that are going through their own struggles. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I love you dearly. Great to see you. Can't wait to see you and Monica together at an event soon, or at least in front at a table. Like, I think you were the last one I sat and had dinner with. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I can't that wait. Soon. You got Good. it. I love you too, buddy. Take care of yourself. Take care. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so Bye. much, everybody, for watching. You've been watching an episode of Let's Chat with Derek.